Good morning and welcome to Walk Before You Run. Today I want to take a look at Jonah 1 and just talk about uh, one word, go. Sometimes in life uh, there are things that God instructs us to do and we're just really not crazy about doing it uh, for a number of reasons. That's the way Jonah felt. Nineveh was a place, it was the place to be. Uh, the walls were 50 feet high. It expanded along the Tigris River for about two and a half miles. Um, good morning. And it had eight miles of wall around the inner city. There were 15 main gates. And the gates had these uh, stone bull statues as guards. And they had zoos, botanical gardens, parks. It was the place to be. And um, the royal residence of the king of Assyria was there because it was the place. So you can imagine if this place was this beautiful and this uh, beyond its time that the people were proud. Not only were the people proud, but I'm sure that the king's pride went through the roof. But um, they, that pride kind of went too far because the people there did what they wanted to do. You know, kind of like that saying, go where I want to go, do what I want to do. And they felt like they were beyond uh, anybody's scope of telling them what to do because they... After all, they lived in Nineveh, the place. And so um, they were so cocky that they were bull, they were bullies. And um, so can you imagine how uh, Jonah felt when the word of God came to him in verse one saying, now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai saying, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. Now, God is telling him, go to the city of Nineveh and um, warn them about their ways. Help them to turn around and do uh, better, to, to live better lives, to, um, to straighten it up and fly right. But now Nineveh had been the enemy of Jonah's country. And so they were the, their bullies. You know, they were the people that they feared most. So can you imagine if God is telling you to uh, go and warn them to turn from their wickedness and turn to me? Can you imagine what Jonah felt like? You know, a lot of times we look at people in the word and think if I were back there, I would do things differently. But can you imagine God telling you to go and help somebody who has done some despicable things to you and um, who want nothing good for you, but God is telling you, go and tell them to turn around and do good so that I can save them. Uh, many of us would be like, well, you know, they just going to have to suffer the consequences. But that's you know, that's the same mindset Jonah had. Good morning, my friend. That's the same mindset Jonah had. Jonah said, look, look what it says um, in verse three. But Jonah, but, but remember means stop, wait a minute. Things are about to change. It says, but Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Now, you know, Jonah knew that he could not flee from the presence of God. You know, Jonah knew that no matter where he went, God is there because after all, God is omnipresent. And so can you imagine him fleeing from the presence of God? And it says, went down to Joppa and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Sometimes when God is telling us to do a hard thing, do you ever, you know, want to flee from the presence of God so that you don't have to do whatever that thing is? Because sometimes living this Christian life, sometimes there are some things that we have to do that are not comfortable. 
that are not the thing that we've always wanted to do. And sometimes, you know, God is insistent. He's adamant that this is what you're going to do. And you really, really don't want to do it. You know, if you're honest with yourself, there are times when God tells you to go that you want to do like Jonah, go the opposite direction. Wherever that person is that God is telling you to embrace, you really want to turn around and do a 180. But there's a lesson to be learned in this story of Jonah. Because if you read the rest of Jonah, you're going to see Jonah ended up having to do exactly what God told him to do after he went through some stuff. And so to save yourself pain, to save yourself um, frustration, to save yourself uh, having to do it anyway, just go. If God tells you to go, go. If God tells you to stay, stay. If God tells you to be quiet, be quiet. If God tells you to work with that person you really don't like working with, come on now, Jonah. If God tells you to embrace that sister that really has hurt you to the core, Jonah. If God tells you that woman who, uh, that man, uh, that child or whoever, who has really said some things that kind of hurt you to the core and God is saying you, you have to forgive them, Jonah. All I want to tell us today is when God tells us to go, go. Sometimes it might be that person that really has um, done some devilment, not just to us, but to a lot of people. You know, when you think about that person, you think about they are the, the last person you would consider to be a Christian or a child of God. But if God is telling you to help that brother or sister to turn it around and do what's right, go. <laughs> I love it. I just saw what my daughter said. For those of you who might see this after, uh, it said, she said, thank God for your word in this moment. He is using you to yell at me. I hear you, Lord. And sometimes he does that. He will send someone to say something. And sometimes it might be somebody on television, somebody on YouTube, somebody just in passing, some conversation you're overhearing. Uh, and, and you'll hear a word that you know is from God. And all you can do is laugh because he's like that. You know, all you can do is laugh and do what he tells you to do. All you can do is go when he tells you to go. So thank you for joining me this morning. I know you can tell by the action that's going on over on the side that um, I have a visitor. But um, God has allowed my visitor to kind of be quiet so I can finish talking to you and share with you what God has to say. So thank you for joining me this morning. Go back and read Jonah. Don't just stop at Jonah 1, 1 through 3, but go and read the whole of Jonah so you can see just what God did. And um, thank you for joining me. And don't just stop at Jonah 1. Go Jonah all the way to Jonah 4. And look at God's going to get his way no matter what. So when God tells you to go, go. I'll see you next time. Remember to walk in God's word before you go out and run your errands or do the things that you love to do. And always, always remember that you are blessed. Even when it doesn't seem like it, even when... You know, things happen that doesn't seem like a blessing. Remember that you still are blessed. And so every opportunity you have, be a blessing to someone else. I'll see you next time. Bye.